Don't reach Shout out to the dance and freeze out
your majesty God, my King, how your freedom washes over me and brings new life, brand new grace. I will bring an offering, take all I have, take all of me in reverence to your majesty.
We come this far by light of day through deserts of loneliness to the sacred place where you know my life is all I've been through. The sin in my heart has kept me from you. And Father, your grace is greater than sin. Mercy rains down and heals me again.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, you are holy, Jesus. Lord, you're holy, Jesus. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you are holy, Jesus. Why don't we do that tonight? Why don't we cry holy in this place right now? Jesus, you are holy. You are holy. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We need a crucifixion in this place tonight. We need a crucifixion of our flesh in this place tonight. We've been told that we need to seek the Lord with our whole heart. We can't get by with half. We can't just do and settle for halfway. We can't just wait until next year or next week we don't have time we've got to get with the program and some of us need to get on the boat tonight and get in the boat and get with the program amen hallelujah Jesus I am thankful for his mercy and grace I can't wait to see what God does, but I'm not going to stop short at halfway. I refuse to quit. I refuse to quit. I want it all. I want to go to the next level. Hallelujah. Brother Pasley. Serious church tonight. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. It cooled down a little outside, but it warmed up in here. Amen. I know you've been giving your best in worship and in singing. Some of you are already in a full lather. You've been sweating and everything, but I need some help tonight. How many of you going to help me? Tonight is the night. This is the night. We're not waiting for tomorrow for the last night. Tonight is the night. It's got to happen tonight in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord has made that very clear and very available to us. When I came in, Brother Soto was leading us in prevailing prayer. And that spirit of victory and that aggressive Holy Ghost presence is here still now. And I don't want you to be flat for the preaching of the word. I'll be real direct. Don't you get jacked for music and then just sit for preaching. Amen. I need you to help me tonight. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. We've had such a wonderful day where we had a little bit of competition and that went uh, in very interesting fashions. But I, I, I commend the, the Mighty Dragons on their effort. But we acknowledge the fact that once again the staff is supreme here on the old campground. And uh, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow on the basketball court. I will not be playing tomorrow because white men can't jump. And I'm very, gravity has a grip on me like few men on the planet. But I will be on the sideline hurling insults at both teams. So you want to be there. It'll be an epic experience. And again, I thank all of you for your response today. Brother Rutledge, that was awesome teaching on media today. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Truth. Amen. Truth with application, not just theory, but what am I going to do with this 
when I get home. Remember Monday night we talked about a process empowering you not only with vision and inspiration, but application on the changes this is going to make in your life because that's what serving God is all about. Right here, look here, right here. Jesus Christ is about transformation. That's what it's about. Changing you every day. And, and that, that journey uh, to glory is a wonderful thing. It's, it's not about just four and a half days at camp. It's about a lifetime journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so proud of you for responding. You have been just a joy to be with and to preach to. And I thank you for that. And I want you, uh, all of you that have been so kind to encourage my heart and Brother Rutledge, I want you to do that at home for your pastor, for your youth leader. You know, let them know you appreciate the word of the Lord that they give to you. Amen. I'm a pastor, and sometimes, you know, Sundays are kind of lonely. You wonder if you're doing any good. And, and we don't need much. I tell my kids, just tell me I made it hard to sleep. I mean, just anything. Throw me a bone. Encourage me. Uh, but those that labor among you faithfully, I want you to honor them and let them know, thank you for the word of the Lord in my life. I want Caitlin to come. We're going to try to sing tonight for the glory of the Lord before I bring you the word of God. And I do really feel uh, such an unction of the Holy Ghost. And, and the day, I want you to know now, the day there has not been collusion with the staff, that why don't we get on this theme and write it from morning until the evening service. But there has been an orchestration of the Holy Ghost. And if it were not so, I would not have, have made that statement. But God has prepared the way for the word tonight. It began with Brother Rutledge. It continued with the panel discussion and some of the things that were said there. And uh, I believe it is all coming together for the word of the Lord. And and, and I, I confess, I didn't know if I was going to get to preach to you tonight. It was so intense and so powerful. But I appreciate your worship. And I believe what the Holy Ghost has done is just till the soil. Turn our hearts open. And I'm going to sow the word. And I believe it's going to bring fruit in your life. 30, 60, 100 fold in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands to a faithful God. He's awesome. Amen. The Lord bless you. Worship with us as we lift up the Lord tonight. I will follow you through green pastures and sing hallelujah to your name. I will follow you through dark disaster and sing hallelujah through the pain. And even in the valley of death, I will praise you. And even in the valley, I will say.
together and worship Him with me. Lift your voice. Exalt the Lord with me. Thank you, Lord. I exalt you, Jesus. I praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through the valleys. And thank you, Lord, for bringing us through the dark times. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. If he's worthy, clap your hands to him again. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Amen. I want to commend Sister Soto and those that worked with her last night on the most incredible thing I've ever seen at a youth camp, and that was a hallelujah luau. Unbelievable. It, it was unbelievable, I'm telling you. And, and yes, there were some disturbing images that were part of that evening. Some of those guys with, uh, they weren't grass skirts, they were branches sewn together very poorly. And then there was the misuse of shells last night that was, oh, I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit just thinking about that. But uh, it's all part of the Wisconsin camp experience. And believe it or not, that kind of stuff really helps us to have these kind of services, to enjoy life, to understand that serving God as an apostolic is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. We're having a great time. Nobody threw up on themselves, and nobody had a hangover this morning. How about that? We're making memories that we want and that we can keep. Amen. My God. That's one of my pet peeves. You know, uh, when, I, when I was young and profoundly ignorant, which wasn't too long ago, and some say continues to this day, I come in on Monday. I dreaded Mondays in high school because Monday was when everybody made up the stories about how much fun they had on the weekend, you know. The drugs, the alcohol, the, the sex, and all that baloney. And uh, they'd say, Pasley, what'd you do on the weekend? Go to church? I said, yeah, twice on Sunday. That was my big deal, you know. And they'd be talking about, dude, it was unbelievable. I got so drunk Friday, I, I passed out, and I woke up Saturday with, with my, my own vomit dried on my clothes. And how dumb was I? I'm thinking, man, I wish I could wake up with my vomit dried on my clothes. I wish I could have such a good time. I passed out, and I don't even know what happened. Man, I was so stupid. To realize now what a joy it is to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To bask in his presence. Man, this is the real deal. You can't drink what we've got right now. Amen. You can't smoke it. You can't buy it. But you can live it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It's 9 o'clock and we got to get busy. And I invite you to turn... In your Bible to the book of James, one of my favorite books of the Bible. It is called by many theologians the book of applied Christianity. We're going to look here at James chapter 4 and begin at verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desire for pleasure? That war in your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. You do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. That you may spend it on your pleasures. Verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Everybody say, ouch. ouch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, it gets better. Or do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Amen. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but God gives grace 
to the humble. Verse 7. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. I want to preach to you tonight victory to victory. And I'm believing that the Lord is going to help us to connect some dots and see some things in our life that will empower us for long-term success in the Holy Ghost. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Uh, in my lifetime, I have known the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Thank you, sir. The thrill of victory ha has been a wonderful thing, but, but I tell you, I, I got to experience in 1996 and 1997, I've been a quiz coach for 31 years, and we had some measure of success, but those two years were special because we won the North American finals back to back. And as sweet as all the ones were before that, when we went back to back, man, it was just at a whole nother level. When, when you repeat, when you build on a victory, another victory, oh, it's awesome. It's epic. And, and there is a momentum and an energy like nothing else that I, I'm telling you guys, if, if you'll go home from this camp, and take what you have been given and how you've been empowered and start making changes in your life. Start doing some of the things Brother Rutledge was challenging to you to with the facts and how you deal with the media and not just letting the media deal with you. I'm telling you, you can build on the victory of this week and the week of the 4th of July, you can have other victories in the Holy Ghost. Amen. In your walk with God, this is our challenge and this is our opportunity for a lifestyle of success because of the power of the Holy Ghost. Consistent spiritual success is very real. And I'm telling you, we can find it and enjoy it. See, the plague of our day is spiritual inconsistency. And I pray God deliver us from that in church one week and out of church the next week. You don't have to serve God like a yo-yo. Come on now. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. What you get a hold of now is going to be the same in 50 years if Jesus doesn't come. And he wants you to have success. You, you don't have to have revolving door Christianity, you know. Great highs and awful lows. And, and I'm here to acknowledge the fact that youth are really set up for this kind of roller coaster spirituality. Because it's just where we are in our development. We are emotional volcanoes. Mark Twain made an observation about adolescence that I find rather interesting. He said when a child turns 12, he should be placed in a pickle barrel and the lid put on top and fed through a hole in the barrel. Don't worry, we're not going to do that, but it's an interesting thought, especially if you've parented four girls who turned 12 at some point. But then he said, when they turn 16, you need to plug the hole. Now, now that's kind of rough. But so is adolescence. So is being a young person. You know, here's what I know. If Jesus comes after camp, if Jesus comes after the the youth rally, if Jesus shows up after midwinter youth retreat, and oh, I'm telling you, if Jesus comes after youth congress, we're going to have a lot of young people go in the rapture. But what if he does not? God, deliver us from event salvation. God, deliver us from only being ready for the rapture because we're coming off of some high. Life is not about camp. It's not about Congress. It's not about rallies. It's about walking with Jesus Christ every day. Amen. I thank God for events. They're just supposed to be highlights to what I'm doing when I'm not at the event. Work with me now. I'm talking to you about your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. I don't have to survive from rally to rally, camp to camp, Sunday to Sunday, whatever. I can find a place in God. I can get a hold of something in the Holy Ghost that grows in me, that magnifies in my life, that increases, amen, in our shallow society ravaged by empty emotionalism and temporary triumphs. You can know the truth of what the Bible calls going faith 
to faith. I'm talking about victory to victory. We are destined to be more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Clap your hands to a victorious Lord. Amen. You know, I mentioned last night, my dad helped me memorize scriptures, and verses 7 and 8 are, are two more that were in my personal arsenal as just a child. I've quoted them all my life. My dad took that Deuteronomy 6 thing of talking about the scripture from morning till evening, very literally, and I thank God for it. But in our dealings with our adversary and enemy of our soul, God gives us a clear course of action, a strategy for success. It is three simple steps, a three-fold cord that is not easily broken. Two aspects address my relationship with God. Do you know me getting it right with Jesus is two-thirds of this thing? Amen. One-third addresses how I relate to the enemy. Now, we had a, a, a marvelous example tonight. We got pretty pumped about victory over the devil, didn't we? That was very exciting. It's very energizing. You know, we all start piling on and, and we get him propped up here and everybody comes by and gives him a kick. That's a wonderful thing. It's great to gang up on the devil. I love it. That's one of the great things about camp. We outnumber him so much here, you know. You can feel really good about it. But when I'm not here with 300 close friends and he gets me one-on-one -on -one at school or in front of my computer or when I'm deciding what to put on my iPod, it's a little different, isn't it? And, and, and friends, as, as exciting as it is to say, I'm going to kick the devil into teeth because he's a sack of dirt. That's a song I'm working on right now. I'm going to kick the devil in the teeth because he's a sack of dirt. Hey! That's got potential. Amen. I hate him. I don't like him. He's like a bag of toenail clippings. Come on, work with me here. You know, that dirt that gets under your neck. That's what the devil is. Amen. He, he, he's a bag of hair. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. But you know what? If I want to put a whooping on him, I have to be connected to Jesus Christ first. Just singing about beating up the devil doesn't do anything to the devil. If you want to defeat the enemy, you've got to be in love with Jesus Christ. Spend your energy seeking after God. Because you know who's going to take care of the devil? The one who threw him out of heaven. And that's the Lord himself. Amen. Amen. And that's okay. I love the choir song. But not a lot of people write a lot of inspirational songs about growing in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It makes for a much better song to beat up on the devil. And, you know, sometimes we can think, well, I'm just going to go out there and get him. And he'll put a whooping on you like that rented mule we talked about. He'll beat you so bad your mom won't recognize you. They'll need dental records to identify the remains. I'm telling you, if I want to be over the devil, I've got to be in the right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. People get pumped up about beating up the devil. They don't get excited about... Jesus Christ and walking with him and letting him be Lord of my life and letting him decide where I go and what I see, what I listen to, what I read, the values I have. I tell you, friend, you cannot engage the enemy with any hope of victory until you have embraced the Lord Jesus Christ. And that threefold strategy begins with this absolutely foundational element. And the word was submit. Yourself, therefore, to God. And I'm going to pound this for just a few moments. The key to the whole thing is are you in submission to Jesus Christ? That's the only thing that has any impact against the devil. Not my willpower, not my rallying cry, not my excitement, but whether or not I'm living a life of submission to the Lord. To obey, to be under, to acknowledge as supreme. Did you... Put it together. Play back a little bit. Just a few hours ago, coming across this pulpit on this very platform, we were talking about submitting.
lives, submitting to the authority of God. In the panel discussion, the call to submission was so clear. I'm telling you, the Lord is putting before us the key weapons in our hand to give us victory when we leave these sacred grounds. If you're going to have any hope of victory over the devil, you've got to be under Jesus Christ. (laughs) Hear me now. If you have any hope of having victory in your life, it's going to be because you have said, Lord, you are the boss, and I submit to you, and I love you, and I will follow your rules. Your efforts and hope to resist the devil are predicated on your life of submission to God and to his word and to his ways and to the men and women of God in your life. You've got to be in submission or you don't stand a chance against the devil. But I'm telling you, if you are in submission, you are going to be the devil's worst nightmare. If you live a life under the things of God and in obedience to God, you will be able to put a whooping on him like you never have in your life. It's only as I'm under God that I can hope to overcome the enemy in my life. If I'm not in submission to God, if I'm not under the control of the Lord in my life, I fail to exalt him in submission. I'm telling you, folks. I'm very vulnerable, and I am sure to be defeated by the temptations the enemy will put in my life. Hear me now. This is a two-edged sword. If you get it, you're going to win. If you don't get it, you are toast. If you're not in submission, if you're entertaining rebellion against the things of God and the ways of God, if you are buying into what the world is selling, if you will, The call to submit is not beyond us. This is not some theological riddle. It's not some etherical mystery that we need some kind of church council to figure out what does it mean to submit. No, the problem is my fundamental nature doesn't like it. My culture is against it. The society is under a tsunami of rebellion. It's how they sell everything. It's how they market everything. It is the theme of entertainment. It's what drives the industry with its heroes. It's all about rebellion because if there's rebellion in my heart, there is weakness on the battlefield for my soul. I'm going to be real practical. I don't want you to have to figure out, you know, exactly what are you saying. With the help of the Lord, I want to tell you exactly what I'm saying. Our day is drunk on the wine of rebellion. It is the subtle and blatant agenda of every aspect of society, from fashion to finance. It's how Burger King sells Whoppers. Have it your way. It's how his Suzu sold trucks. We, this time we're breaking all the rules. I'm telling you, it's out there. Sometimes it has just been lowered to a jingle. But friend, it is a song of a loser. When there is rebellion in my heart, I cannot say no to the devil. But when there's submission in my my life, I can say no to sin and be victorious. Stay with me now. It has begun to dominate the media. I'm telling you, it is the recurrent, constant theme of music. That's why what Brother Rutledge was saying was so powerful. See, what is driving the whole thing? A rebellion against God. Because the enemy knows if there's rebellion in your life, you can't say no to sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You just can't. Because the ability to resist is predicated on your willingness to submit. James didn't just by happenstance line it up that way. He said, first you must submit to God. So I'm telling you, in this day where rebellion rules the day, In this day when the culture pounds it through everything, I I pray to God that with the help of the Lord in the next few moments, I can call you to understand submission is not the life of a geek. It is the life of a champion. Submission is not being weak. It's finding strength. It's getting the saddle off of your back that the devil rides you in the ground every day. Why? Because there's rebellion in you. And you can't resist him if there's rebellion. So I say submit. Submit to your parents. Submit to your leaders. Submit to your preacher. Submit to the teachers. Submit to the authority figures in your life that God has put there. I challenge you now. Inventory your life. Let's do a little inventory. 
Where's there rebellion in you? There's lots of places it's there. Will you be willing to admit it with me? I bet it's in your attitude. If you're an adolescent, it is. You're all a bunch of punks. At least I was. You all got this attitude, this mouth. Anybody ever had an adult say, don't talk to me that way? Thank you, the three that are honest and the rest that are scared. Good, good. You know, a horrible thing happens to children. It's a horrible thing. Brother and Sister Soto, brace yourself. Children become adolescents. Oh, it's ugly. I had four daughters. Seemed like a good idea at the time. But my Lord, between all the estrogen in my house, that's female hormone for you people that aren't uh, with it. And then the advent of adolescence, it was Armageddon at our house. Armageddon. It got so bad I would say, don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> See, it's not just that you're a punk. It's not just that you got a smart mouth. The devil has put in you the seed that will go into a harvest of defeat. As long as you rebel against authority with your mouth and with your thoughts, you're going to be defeated in the temptations of your soul. Okay? Okay? Now, I know it goes with the territory, but I'm telling you, you can fight it. You can say, God, deliver me from myself. I've prayed that for about 40 years. God, help me to overcome my nature. See, that's why the devil moves in when you're young. You're naturally inclined. This is part of the growing up process. It's how you break away into independence and autonomy, and that's got its place. But I'm telling you, instead of being a jerk, instead of being a smart mouth, how about a yes, sir, or a no, ma'am? See the difference it makes in your spiritual strength. Look for rebellion in your wardrobe. Okay, you know, and I don't expect you guys to all go Amish on me. I'm not. Do y'all have Amish in Wisconsin? Yes. In Ohio, we call them the Amish. Precious people. Dude, black, brown, gray, and white. Now, that's a kicking wardrobe right there. And all the guys look like Abe Lincoln look-alike contest participants, you know. And they apparently they just buy different size bowls to give those precious boys haircuts. And you see them in their buggies and they're smiling and waving. And I'm going, dude, we think we got trouble as apostolics because we don't dress like sluts and cheap and everything, you know. We're going, trying to be a little modest here. Don't you feel sorry for yourself? We're not asking you to do anything but keep from getting beat up or attacked. Okay? So, you know, four daughters. I, man, I've been a member of the fashion police for a long time. I know how that works. And I know how important it is so you feel good about yourself. I've spent a lot of time and money to facilitate that. And i got no problem with that. But I'm telling you, when fashion is a statement of rebellion... Rebellion against modesty, rebellion against gender distinctives between men and women. What is it? It is the enemy's way to make a generation unable to resist sin. That's what it is. So there's, there's one line that is cool and that is fashionable. There's another line that can be crossed by men and women, by men and women. Some of you guys, come on now. That is not a look that's cool. That's a look that's defiant. And rebellion in your dress puts weakness in your spirit. Got a couple more. How about in your entertainment? If you're pumping your head full of music that is obscene and immoral and ideas that are against the word of God, just rebellion set to music. That's what it is. Just pounding ideas that are abiblical, anti-God, anti-everything that the Lord stands for. You pound that kind of rebellion into your thought patterns. You are absolutely set up to be a deck of cards on the battlefield for your soul. When the devil comes with a temptation, you are so full of rebellion, you're going to fall. You've got to clean that up. 
I, I, I'm telling you, some of us, there's some CDs that got to go. We got to delete some things off of that iPod. It, it, it's got to, there's got to be some changes. Why? Because it's rebellion. If rebellion gets in here, I cannot resist the devil. Okay? What about your heroes? You know, a lot of them are just, my God, they are icons of rebellion. They are icons against what is moral and what is good and what is family and what is pure and what is safe and what is healthy. They are the absolute antithesis of what the scripture calls a man or woman to be. I'm telling you, they don't need to be on your walls. They don't need to be the object of your admiration. You know, I laughed about my poor old Bengals, half of them getting arrested. You know, I, I, maybe it's just because I'm older or whatever. But, you know, sports heroes are all just punks. And if they couldn't play any ball, they'd be unemployed somewhere. Goodness sakes, ladies and gentlemen, if you're admiring the rebellious, they have polluted you and infected you with that spirit that makes you at risk on the battlefield for your soul. Because if you have rebellion in your heart, you will not be able to resist the devil. Because the only way you say no to the devil is by saying yes to God. It's yes to God. That's what empowers you. Amen, amen, amen. The word of the Lord is absolute. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Untoward means a generation that won't be told, that won't be corrected, that won't receive instruction. If you're having trouble resisting the devil, I'm telling you it's not because you got a bad batch of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing wrong with the Holy Ghost. The problem, if you can't say no to sin, the problem is you've said yes to rebellion. In some measure, in your attitude, in your look, in your entertainment, in your heroes, somewhere there's rebellion in you and it has compromised your ability to resist the enemy of your soul. And I'm telling you, my friends, if you'll do the right thing, if you'll start cleaning house, it's going to take us to the next step. Resist the devil. Friend, that's not some kind of passive patty cake kind of posture. It means to withstand, to oppose, to be totally against, to actively fight, to work in opposition, to not yield to or be affected by. I'm telling you, friend, you cannot ignore the devil and expect him to leave you alone. You don't shoo him away like a fly. You get a fly swatter and you squish him like a bug. You've got to resist the devil in the authority of the Holy Ghost that comes from a life of submission. If you're going to beat him, you've got to fight him. Oh, I hope the devil doesn't pick on me. That ain't going to cut it. We don't need Pentecostal pancake. We need people to understand that the kingdom of heaven is facilitated by violence. And the violent take the kingdom of heaven by force. If you're saved, it's not going to be accidental. It's going to be intentional. It's because you fought your way through the pearly gates, not skated your way into heaven. Everybody clap your hands to the glory of the Lord. I'm hastening to a close. First piece, submit. Second piece, resist. Third piece, back to God. I can't overemphasize this enough. If you want victory in your life, it's got to be through your connection to the Lord Jesus. Draw nigh to God. Get close to the Lord. I did a little study that draw nigh is a Greek verb of motion, which means to pursue, to chase after God. Don't make your focus only how far can you get from sin. You know, I think we've, we've sent that message sometimes to our youth that, you know, just say no to the devil. And that's only half of it. You've got to say yes to God. Resist the devil, but draw nigh to God. Get close to the Lord. Fill his, put his word in your heart that you might not sin against him. I'm telling you, friend, when I get that combination working, when two-thirds of my energy is getting closer to God, it empowers that one-third to say no to sin and tell the devil to get off of me, that I am not available anymore. We have a formula of victory to victory. Back-to-back -back wins in the battle for our soul. Do all three desperately. Do all three passionately. Do all three consistently. Because did you see it then? The verse ends with a double bonus. A double bonus. 
I'm preaching in a hurry because we're going to take some time in this altar tonight. The double bonus is the first thing that happens is Satan flees from you. How about that? You resist the devil and he flees from you. When you, in the power of submission, say, devil, get. This book says he runs. He takes off running. Not he saunders off. Not he shuffles off, cussing under his breath. No, he takes off running like a big ugly girl's chasing him for a kiss. Maybe that wasn't the best example. Or a big ugly guy. Whatever the case may be. Satan flees. When you submit and you resist, you put the devil on the run. I'm telling you, that sounds so awesome. Now, come on. That's back. We can relate to that. That's exciting. Devil's on the run. And I wish I had a gun. Come on. I'm going to write another one. Amen. That's only half of the bonus, though. <laughs> the other half is God gets closer. I tell you what, friends, I, I want you to, to really get a picture of the devil running from you. I'll tell you a story uh, from my childhood. It's, it's quite compelling. You may want to take a few notes. Uh, I was an only child, about the age of nine. I was this weight, but about a foot and a half shorter. So I was very circular in my physical appearance. And uh, from time to time, I would walk around outside my house there in Cincinnati, just doing a safety check, making sure everything was fine. And on this particular summer day, I saw up in the corner of a window a hornet's nest that had begun to form. Now, somewhere in a half-conscious state, uh, studying science and nature and insects and things. I thought somebody had said that, that wasp and hornets were disoriented by smoke. And so I said, well, what we need here is fire. So I went into my garage and I pulled out a long bamboo pole. We used to use those to fish. I took a rag from my dad's uh, work area and I soaked it in flammable fluid. We called it paint thinner back then. It was all a pre-latex phenomenon. And I got me a match and I lit it. <laughs> and I had me one flaming torch. The smoke was billowing and I said, dude, I don't know, the spirit of the Orkin man came on me or something, you know. And I said, these hornets, these wasps, they're going down. I mean, the pole was about nine feet long. And I'm holding on to the back three feet, you know. And now I, I don't know how sophisticated the society of the hornet is, or of the wasp. Let's go with hornets. But here's what I know. Before I got to the nest, they came after me. I think something happened inside the nest like this. There's a fat kid, and he's got a flaming torch. <laughs> Battle stations. We must counterattack. And I'm telling you, you know, I had the flame, I had the smoke going, and through the smoke, here they came. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I dropped that stick and I set a United States record for a 40-yard dash. <laughs> I was running and all of my neighbors were going, run, Norman, run. <laughs> I was picking them up and putting them down, baby. I'm telling you, that's what the devil will do to you. He'll pick them up and put them down. Because when, when you submit, you can say no and it means something. Hallelujah. The devil will flee from you. Like a fat kid running from a hornet's squad. Amen. Praise God. I'm not kidding. It was powerful. I don't know how far I ran, but I remember seeing Indiana at some point. And God draws closer. You know, it's the same verb. You chase after God, God will chase after you. That's, that sounds like a holy collision waiting to happen. Wow. You know, I know some of you have been working now. It's, we've been here, you know, two and a half days. And some of you have been trying to get somebody to notice you. And God love you, you're still invisible to whoever she is or he is. But when you reach out to God, 
God always reaches back. When you say, Lord, I want more of you, the Lord says, and I want to give you more of me. When you say, Lord, I want you in my life bigger than you were before, he says, that's exactly what I want. That's why I died. That's why I'm here for you. And so my friends, we're, we're here at a point to realize that, that God has given us an opportunity. What a deal. Less of the enemy and more of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. I believe that tonight some of you are, are putting some things together. Brother Rutledge's words are ringing in your ears today about making some changes in how you entertain yourself and how you handle the media and getting rid of some of those things in your life. I believe you're hearing some of the panel discussion that so exalted the call to submission. I believe that what we've preached to you tonight, it's starting to make some sense to you. But here's what I want to tell you. I'm not going to count on you to come and pray this through tonight. Some of you have got to put your life in submission to God. You know, the reason the worship was at such another level here, we've been almost three days pretty much rebellion free. No media, no music. The fashion police are out. And the more we submit, the more powerful we get in God. Do you see that? Well, if we go home and resume all the sources of rebellion and what we wear and what we hear and what we read and who we idolize, we're going to find ourselves weak again and go, man, what happened? I thought, I want a refund. That camp thing didn't work. No, it'll work. But you've got to make some changes. And so tonight, I'm going to give you a great opportunity for an apostolic experience. And that is where the ministry is going to lay hands on you in Jesus' name. What we're fixing to have here on this Wisconsin camp is an old-fashioned prayer line. And I don't know if you've ever been in one or not, but it is a life-changing experience. Because the book says, when anointed men and women of God lay hands on you in Jesus' name, powerful things can happen. Amen. And I tell you, we... we I know we're going to have consecration, and that's going to be an awesome exclamation mark to what's going to happen in this altar tonight. We're going to have to organize ourselves. First of all, I want to alert the security elements. I don't want any of the campers to slip out. I'm not asking you to come. I'm telling you, if you're a registered camper, you're going to walk through this prayer line tonight because I don't want to drive back to Ohio without knowing I have done my very best to touch your life and touch your soul with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, tonight's the night to get it. If you haven't had a refilling, tonight's the night to get a refilling. If you're struggling with things in your life, tonight is the night to put those on the altar and live a life of submission and quit living a life of rebellion. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray together. Jesus, I want you to govern what happens here in these next few minutes. Lord, this isn't for some emotional hype. This isn't for any special effect. This is in obedience to your word and what I feel like you have put in my heart for this camp. I thank you for these precious young men and women. I don't want any of them to be afraid tonight. There's not going to be anything bad happen to them in this line. They're going to feel the power of God in a very real way. I want you to anoint every minister, every youth leader, every man and woman that's going to pray for these young people. I want you to give us the authority of the Holy Ghost to engage spirits, Lord. I want to drive rebellion from these hearts. I want young people to fall in love with submission to you, Lord, in a way that will enable them to go home and make some life change and realize that when they resist the devil, he has to run because before they resist, they have submitted to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I claim it. In the authority of the Holy Ghost, I thank you for it. Everybody say amen. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to funnel everybody into this middle aisle. And it's okay, men and women. That's all right. Uh, I'm going to ask Brother and Sister Soto. Uh, Brother Tim, I want you to come. Sister Boyd, I want you to come. Caitlin, I want you to come and pray with me. We're going to form a little gauntlet right here. Right here in the middle. And we're going to pray for every one of these young people. It's going to be a continuous flow, okay? We're not going to... Each one of us aren't going to spend five minutes with you. No, my friend, that's, that's not how this works. But when you get in that line, I need some music, not some pounding music, but some worship music 
to entertain the presence of God, to effect life change. I want the men of the youth committee and any ministers that are here that will help us to, to then form a gauntlet to this side because we're going to send the men this way. I want the ladies of the youth committee and the lady counselors and ministers that are here, I want you to form a gauntlet on this side and we're going to send the girls that way. Counselors, if you'll be ready, there's going to be young people just overcome in the presence of the Lord. I, I want you to help facilitate them through and keep this orderly, but be ready to pray people through to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our goal is for every camper to speak with tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. That's why we're here. Amen. Hallelujah. Campers, I want all the campers, all the registered campers to stand and, and move across the aisle. Move across the aisle. That's good. That's good. We're getting right in here. All right, brother and sister Soto, right up there by the altar. That's right. Go back.